Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a lot about personal finance and investments but I also cover a little bit about lifestyle, especially wine. So yes, we've got another wine video. So before drinking it up tonight, I wanted to wish you guys a happy Valentine season. It doesn't really matter if you're gonna have a date or maybe you're just drinking by yourself. I'm not judging. Today's wine inspiration is all about celebrations. So today, we're featuring another bubbly. As always in this channel, we're not gonna try to break bank and we are in search of great value wines. So today, we're featuring Champagne's lesser known cousin, the Cremant. So just a little bit of a background before we open this bottle. Cremant or Cremant is actually a French sparkling wine that is of course produced outside Champagne. Cremant is actually produced in various regions and this one that we're featuring today comes from the region of Alsace. Now Alsace is actually an interesting region. Alsace actually sits right beside Switzerland and Germany. So it's actually interesting that this region has been at some point Germany and now it's France. If you look at pictures, you probably won't identify it as France. It actually reminds me of the town where Beauty and the Beast was set. So anyway, Alsace is actually home to a lot of prized wines. They grow a lot of Riesling, a lot of Pinot Blanc, and they also grow a lot of lighter reds such as Pinot Noir. By land, Alsace is actually quite near to Champagne, but the difference with Alsace is that it is actually a slightly warmer region. The grapes tend to be a little bit more ripened during harvest season, so the wine here would tend to have a little bit more natural sweetness, not necessarily sweeter. In fact, Cremant is said to use less sugar than their Champagne counterparts just because their grapes are already a little sweeter. So enough of the background and let's get this bottle open. Today's Cremant is a Cremant de Alsace from the producer Arthur Metz and this is a Brut 2020 quite a young bottle and as a Brut again it's supposed to be a little dry okay let's get it open as we're getting this open you might be wondering why I have an ice bucket here well I thought that the occasion called for it if you're buying yourself a Cremant I suggest you have an ice bucket to keep its cool temperature and for aesthetics i just always think that having an ice bucket there just looks much better than just pulling it out of the refrigerator ready to open happy valentine's and as always i'm gonna be making use of two different glasses here again we use a flute so that we maintain the bubbles a little bit more and I'm also going to be using a regular wine glass so that we can look into the flavors more closely. So visually, it has a lot of very small bubbles. It's like a bubble bath. It's quickly dissipating right now, but the bubbles actually look very put together. On the nose, as expected, it's a little yeasty. But to be honest, it doesn't smell as yeasty as red forward as maybe champagne or maybe even cava. Just like champagne, it also uses the traditional method which means that Cremant also undergoes second fermentation in the bottle. So the process is actually quite similar if not the same to champagne. The only difference would be in terms of grapes, this Arthur Metz bottle actually makes use of Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, and Pinot Noir. So aside from a slightly yeasty scent, there's a bit of an apricot, a bit of peach that's in it. Also slight hints of lemon. In terms of color, I wouldn't say that it's on the very light yellow. Of course, it's not also in the darker yellow like a Chardonnay. It's actually quite in the middle. Just the right amount of incandescent gold. Let's try it out. So I like that. It has a bit of qualities of sour candy. Not in the outright poker your face type of taste, but there's something that's quite tart that's there. So for freshness, let me seal this back up with a regular cork. As said before, best you finish this bottle within the day, if not by the next day probably. After that, I can't really guarantee that the bubbles will still be there. And so what can I say about my first Cremant? 
I think it's not as complex as I was expecting. But what I've liked about this is that it just has a very crisp, a very clean taste. Although it smells fruity, the flavors are actually quite balanced. I see this going well with some good salmon, but also with some chicken or even light pork dishes. On the price side, this is slightly more expensive than the previous sparkling wines that we've tasted. So this bottle actually costs 744 pesos from SNR. Again, at over 700 pesos, it's not gonna come cheap, but the cheapest champagne bottle would be around 3,000 pesos. So if you want to impress a date or just have fun by yourself, get yourself a bottle of crema. I hope this video gives you some talking points for your dates. So what are you guys drinking for Valentine's? Let me know your answers in the comment section. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing. Please also check out my new Instagram account. I'm featuring there everything that I don't really get to do here on this channel. Wine that I drink throughout the week. So if you want to know more about my shorter wine reviews, follow me there. Thanks again for watching guys and cheers!